What's up, Holy Venomites? Holy Venom here, and I needed to do this and make a video about this because this is important for the whole entire world, not just the United States, for literally everyone, specifically brothers and sisters in Christ. And yeah, this this let's just get into it. So there's a new law that was just passed in the House that people are saying could make parts of the New Testament illegal, preaching parts of the New Testament a hate speech and a criminal act and uh, just make the Bible plain wrong. So this is H.R. 6090 that was just passed in the House. It's the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023. Now, we, from the outside, it looks like a great act. If you don't know what anti-Semitism is, it's the hostility or prejudice towards or against Jewish people. So anti-Semitism is wrong. And that's why this bill on the outside seems great. But in my opinion and many others, it's just generally too broad. So it says this bill, and this is the congress.gov, this bill provides statutory authority for the requirement that the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights take into consideration the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism when reviewing or investigating complaints of discrimination based on race, color, or national origin. So basically, if a complaint is made on someone, they have to take into consideration the I... Oh. Hold up one second. This video is by Isaiah, Isaiah Salvador. Shout out to Brother in Christ here for presenting this news. Back to the video. HRA's definition of anti-Semitism when reviewing that complaint. Now, here's the definition. This is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which is what they're saying, taking these definitions in account when they're going to basically penalize somebody or prosecute someone for a crime. So here's all their definitions, but here's the one. I'm not going to go through all of them. Again, anti-Semitism is wrong. I stand with Israel. I have videos on why you should stand with Israel. And Just so you know, I stand with Israel too. Why I love the Jewish people, even though many of them reject Jesus as Messiah. I do believe there's going to be a great revival among the Jewish people. I do believe they're still God's chosen people, and I do stand with Israel. If you haven't seen my videos, there's that. So I'm against, and I think anti-Semitism is completely wrong. Here's the definition, though. When applying the anti-Semitic act. Okay, so let's pause right here and take note. Using the symbols and images associated with a classic anti-Semitism example, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel Israelites. Mm. Acts being criminal. Here's the one that gets a little sketchy. So here's would be considered anti-Semitism using symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism. Example, claims of Jesus, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel as Israelis. So this is where people are saying, well, Jews did hand Jesus over to the Romans to be killed. So the Jewish people were responsible in killing Jesus. That is a historical fact. So if we say that, if we teach that, if we preach that, are we now anti-Semites? That's where the, the law gets sketchy here. Republicans, this is Newsweek. Republicans voting for a bill that could make the Bible illegal outrages MAGA. MAGA conservatives voice outrage at congressional Republicans voting for the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act over concerns it can make the Bible illegal. Congress on Wednesday passed the bill, which required the Department of Education to use the IHRA's working definition, which we already looked at, when enforcing anti-discrimination laws. Okay, and it's because of all these pro-Palestinian protests in colleges. Won't go into all of that. Um, here's what some of the people that voted against it said. 91 members of Congress voted against it. Some conservatives are taking issue. And it's not just Republicans voting against it. Democrats are also voting against it. And this is what we talked about, including claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood level, arguing that it could mean parts of the Bible would now become illegal. Basically, pretty much the whole New Testament would become illegal to preach. Because that's the four Gospels. That's the whole message of the four Gospels in the New Testament. Jesus being handed over to the Jewish people by the Romans, and the Jewish people crucifying Jesus, only to find out they done wrong. They done goofed. Not the current Jewish people now. Back then, in Jesus' time. So... Let me finish the video out, and then I'll put my comments and stuff. And then let's look at some of the people that said this. Um, 
Did the House of Representatives just make parts of the Bible illegal? Posted conservative commentator Charlie Kirk to X, formerly Twitter. So Charlie Kirk is pro-Israel from my understanding, but he's saying, did they just make parts of the Bible legal with this? Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene posted, anti-Semitism is wrong, which we all agree on, but I will not be voting for the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023, H.R. 6090, that would convict Christians of anti-Semitism for believing the gospel that says Jesus was handed over to Herod to be crucified by the Jews. So this to me, guys, is where it feels very broad. And when you have laws that are very broad, you get into territory where, what's the standard? Now if I get up and preach, Jesus was killed and handed over to the Romans by the Jews, is now is that hate speech now? Am I considered a criminal, criminal now for saying that? And of course, that's biblical. 1 Thessalonians 2.14 says, And dear brothers and sisters, you suffered persecution from your own countrymen. And this way, you imitated the believers in God's church in Judea who, because of their belief in Christ Jesus, suffered from their own people, the Jews. For some of the Jews killed the prophets and even killed the Lord Jesus. So right here, right Paul is t telling the church in Thessalonica, some of the Jews killed the Lord Jesus. Now they have persecuted us too. They failed to please God and work against all humanity. So they try to keep us from preaching the good news of salvation to the Gentiles. By doing this, they continue to pile up their sins, but the anger of God has caught up with them at last. So you see, in the Bible, and Bible prophecy, history tends to repeat itself. It can have two times application, quadruple application, but the word of God always returns full. It's never, no, it's never void. It always comes full. And we're seeing that right now. So here we clearly see in the Bible the Jews re being responsible for the killing of Jesus. So if we preach that, again, the law seems broad. If we preach this text, is this now considered hate speech? Does this now go against the First Amendment freedom of speech? doesn't seem to be that's what the law is saying, but it seems so general that it could encompass even this. Once it gets passed, it's so broad, could they change those definitions now? That's where I just think it's questionable. Romans talks about Romans um, 11.25. Look what it says here. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So God blinded the Jews in a sense. God blinded these Jews in, in Israel to allow the Gentiles to come in. There was a blindness put upon them. The point is, if you go through Romans, if you go through 1 Thessalonians, if you go through much of the New Testament, you'll see this idea that the Jewish people were blinded so the Gentiles could come in, so the Gentiles could be grafted. The Gentiles were wild olive branches that were grafted in because the Jewish people rejected the Messiah. So now it seems to be, does this law, and I'm interested to start dialogue here, does this law seem so broad that if I get up to preach, the Jews killed Jesus, Jesus being king of the Jews, was killed by his own people, is that now hate speech? Am I now an anti-Semite for saying that? The, the law seems broad. The crazy part is these laws seem to be passed right under our nose. Right, The House passes it, and Congress is passing it, and then it goes into law, and now parts of the Bible seem to be illegal. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but it seems to be too broad. If anything, it seems to be too broad. When I read this law, I'm like, that's a lot of definitions. I think anti-Semitism is terrible and wrong, so it seems to be a good law, but I'm worried that this infringes on our First Amendment freedom of speech to proclaim the gospel. The gospel, that message, if you preach that full gospel message, Jesus was killed by the Jews. Jesus was turned over to the Romans by the Jewish people. That is not anti-Semitism, that's a historical fact. So I think, I think things get too blurry. I would say the law needs to be more defined. It can't just be three sentences saying, hey, whatever the IHRA, you know, the Holocaust, what was it? Just to have my facts right. The International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and all their definitions, they just get to say what defines anti-Semitism. And if they say killing Jesus or saying, you know, the, Jew, the Israelis or Jewish people have a part in that, now, of course, those of today don't have a part in that because this happened 2,000 years ago. But historically, the Jews did kill Jesus. That's mm -hmm. not wrong to say. That's not being an anti-Semite to say. It's a fact. 
So I think, if anything, the law is too broad. But I want to start the dialogue. I want to bring awareness to this. And I'm interested in the comments. I'll be reading all of the comments. What do you think about this? Do you think this is a bad law? Give me a thumbs down or a thumbs up in the comments. Thumbs up, it's a good law. Thumbs down, it's a bad law. I just think it's too broad. And I think it could start getting in some weird territory where parts of the Bible are not allowed to be published or get taken out. Um, so interested to hear what you guys think. I'm live Mondays and Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock. I'm also live Thursday at noon. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment. Also pray about becoming a monthly partner and joining our 1.30 p.m. weekly prayer calls on Thursday to help our ministry continue and help us put out free content and free live streams. We'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. <clears throat> now, can the government do this? Technically, no. Is it stopping the government from doing this? Obviously not. And I'll go into this being a precursor with my own testament and whatnot. Uh, when it comes to preaching the Bible in general, not just the anti-Semitism stuff, but like preaching the Bible itself in general becoming illegal and hate crime pretty much. Now last year, I'm sure some of you who will see this know about this. Last summer, I was arrested and put in uh, put in jail for preaching against the a certain alphabet community and the legalization of a certain term of group of people that like to how can I say this without getting demonetized or anything like that or on YouTube P three D zero files think that that's safe to say but the one person had a love is love shirt on and to say love is love is to say love is love no matter the age and that is legalizing you know what and I told this woman hey you know that's not right you know love is not love God is love that's in first John if not mistaken correct me if I'm wrong actually you know, I'll pull it up real quick hold up really quick I'll pull I'll pull that verse up First John four seven to ten, beloved, let us know. Let us love one another, for God, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. Not love is love. God is love. But, uh, she's like, oh, whatever, and then. Police Chief Solchik started harassing me, and he's like, oh, stop, stop. I'm like, uh, I can't stop. I've been in an explosive disorder. You know, I, it's hard for me to stop. Pedophilia is being legalized. You have zero authority over me because you're not God. You have no authority over me. You're not Jesus. Pedophilia is being legalized. Do something about it. And that's when he, I, I turned around to go back home. And he turned, he went and put his hands on me and attacked me and says, you're under arrest. And I said, get your effing hands off me. And I, I explained the rest of that in the uh, video, uh, the live video I did when that happened when I got out of jail. My testimony of everything that happened in detail. So if you've seen that, check that out. But just an example of broadly, in general, the Bible being deemed illegal and hate speech. However, with this HR 6090, technically the government can't do this, but it is, because the Antichrist is among us. That's clear and evident. The Antichrist is here. So, why is this happening? Why is this being pushed? It's because it's God's will. And this is part of God's will in bringing about the second coming of our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> Excuse me, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you're probably wondering and asking, when this comes into full effect throughout the whole world and whatnot, it's not, it's not even an if, it's, what, it's when this goes out throughout the whole world, and aside from the United States, because a lot of the states are already taking part in this, like I said. What's going to happen? 
because it said the Bible is supposed to be preached out throughout the whole world, then the end will come. If, when this goes through, how will the Bible be preached out the whole world? I should have left that away here. Just hold on. Actually, before I go into that, I'm going to search that whole, that little thing up real quick. I think you know what verse I'm about to show you with that, but these couple of verses. So right now, we're living in the days of Noah, and Second Timothy, verse or chapter three, verse one to nine. This no, hold up. There we go. There we go. There we go. Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, verse one to nine. This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, choose breakers, false accusers, incontent, fears, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady or haughty, high minded or headstrong, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away, for this for of this sort there are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never be and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these that resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed f f no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as their as theirs also was. So again, history is going to repeat itself. The next verse I'm going to show you all. Right here. So it is, and it said, In this gospel the kingdom shall be preached in all the worlds for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So when this law, when, so when this happens, more fully than it already is, specifically with this, how is that supposed to, how, how, this is Jesus' words right here in Matthew twenty four fourteen. How, how is the gospel going to be preached about the kingdom? Because the whole gospel message is that Jesus Christ was crucified and rose again. And Jewish people of his time, doing so by the permission of the Romans. Herod, King Herod, he sent... He sent Jesus over to, punch to uh, the Roman people, the Sadducees and Pharisees, and they killed the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is fact, as Brother S. A. just mentioned. But, Matthew 24, verse 36 to 44, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of Son of Man be. Then two shall be in field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, if the good man of the house had known what, what hour, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not, not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in a such hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Now, again, how... is the gospel going to be preached when this is going to be end up happening? Because this is, this is happening. This is going to happen because this is going to be, this is going to start about the persecution and the imprisonment of Christians worldwide, not just the states. This is the start of that. And again, as I said, the precursor with my uh, imprisonment for preaching against a certain group of people, need I say more, 
when it comes to a specific thing. I got put in jail for it. Again, if you haven't seen the live for it, I'll have it in the description in the comments, or the description as well, and at the end of the video, or a title card here, whatever I choose to do. But, how? Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 tells us how. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So, what does this mean for us Christians? This means we are to stay steadfast in the faith. Keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. This is war. This now means war. I appreciate you joining this video. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. God bless you. I love you. Remember, Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. God bless. Being in the world, but not of the world, allows you to see the evil of the world. Be of Christ Jesus, for he is the truth, and so shall he also show you the truth of all things.